Sorry. Uh, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to invite uh, all the people to sit around the table, please, because, you know, it's empty right now. So it would be great if you could sit with us on the table. Um, we'll just wait for two more minutes, and uh, because we have many registrations for the session, um, people must be still coming from lunch, so we'll just wait for two more sessions, two more minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I see a timer in front of me, so I think we should start. Uh, thank you very much for joining this session on the WISIS Forum 2020 open consultation process. Our co-organizers, UNESCO, UNCTAD, remotely from Geneva, and UNDP are also present with us here today. And uh, <coughs> we'd like to start this session by inviting uh, Mr. Yushi Turigare to please uh, make his welcoming remarks uh, on our behalf. Thank you, Yushi. Uh, thank you, Jitanjari. Uh, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Yushi Torigoe, uh, Chief of Strategic Planning and Membership Department of International Telecommunication Union. Uh, on behalf of ITU and the co-organizers, uh, UNESCO, UNCTAD, and UNDP, I welcome all on-site and remote participants to this second physical meeting of this WISIS Forum 2020 open consultation process on the thematic aspects and format. The open consultation process of the WISIS Forum 2020 was launched in June 2019 and consists of six phases, including four physical meetings. Through its open and inclusive process, all stakeholders are invited to participate in building the agenda and program of WISIS Forum. ITU, along with the co-organizers and more than 32 UN agencies, is pleased to invite you to the WISIS Forum that is scheduled to be held from 6 to 9 April 2020 in Geneva, Switzerland. The main theme of the forum is fostering digital transformation and global partnership with this action line for achieving SDGs. I would like to also inform you that with this forum next year, with this plus 15, will provide an opportunity to serve as a platform to track the achievement of with this action line in collaboration with the UN agencies involved and provide status and analysis of the implementation of WISIS Action Line since 2005. Together, we recognize the power of tech innovation that is critical to drive social, economic, and environmental growth, as well as to play a key role in supporting successful implementation of SDGs. Let us push forward together in our efforts to align the WISIS process with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In August, we assisted UNSCAP with a regional review for the Asia-Pacific region in Bangkok, Thailand. It was very encouraging to note that successful implementation of the WISIS action lines to achieve the SDGs. Some WISIS prize winners and champions from the region were present and showcased their projects. It was particularly remarkable to learn that award of WISIS prizes greatly assisted the development <coughs> and success of these projects. The 2020 WISIS prize winners and champions will be awarded and recognized during WISIS forum. 
The WSIS Forum is built on the key principle of inclusivity, and this is embodied in the program of WSIS Forum in collaboration with you, uh, the WSIS stakeholders. We are in the midst of preparation for the next year's forum, including the special tracks like youth, ICT, and old persons, ICT for persons with disabilities, ICT and gender mainstreaming, space and SDGs. WSIS Forum relies entirely on voluntary contribution, and so we are very grateful that this support and will encourage countries and partners to contribute. I would like to take this opportunity to thank several countries and partners uh, for their uh, confirmation of partnership already uh, for the WSIS 2020. I wish you a successful meeting and look forward to welcome you at WSIS 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yushi, for those encouraging remarks. Uh, I'd like to now invite uh, Sasha, uh, our focal point from UNESCO, to please uh, make her remarks. Thank you very much, Jitanjali, for that uh, introduction. As mentioned in the opening remarks of the ITU, the overall theme for this uh, year's WISIS Forum in 2020 is fostering digital transformation and global partnerships, WISIS action lines for achieving the SDGs. This is at the heart of SDG 17 and also of the message most recently by the Secretary General in the opening of the Internet Governance Forum where he called for new and reinforced forms of multilateral and multi-stakeholder cooperation. So, UNESCO today is very happy not only to be up here with our, our friends and colleagues and partners within the UN, uh, but also with the different stakeholder groups around the table today, which represents for us the heart of uh, the future of participatory public policy development in support of sustainable development specifically. I'd also just like to underline before when we were preparing for this meeting that Jitanjali and Minerva and I were talking about the fact that several years ago uh, this uh, platform was largely directed by men and now uh, there are three women that are uh, four women with uh, Scarlett uh, from uh, Jungtad at a distance that are coordinating this work which uh, also underlines the fact that the future is female but that the future of tech development is also female and this is one of our commitments at UNESCO is mainstream streaming gender equality in the work that we are doing. Many of you know that UNESCO is the UN agency with a mandate to uphold freedom of expression and promote the free flow of ideas by word and image. We do this very concretely through implementing what we call our Knowledge Societies uh, guidelines. And these guidelines are built around four main pillars. The first is freedom of expression. The second is universal access to information and knowledge. The third is respect for cultural and linguistic diversity. And the fourth is quality education for all. These four pillars are uh, very much embodied in the work that we are doing as action line facilitator for several of the WSIS action lines. And I'd just very briefly like to highlight, especially in light of the fact that we are about to close our general conference, some of the uh, major achievements in these action lines that have just been decided by our 193 member states in Paris over the past 72 hours. So the first action line that we work on is access to information and knowledge, action line C3. And in this regard, and also in the framework of the Internet Governance Forum, we have looked specifically at our work in implementing our Internet Universality Framework, which guides our work more broadly on digital transformation and also artificial intelligence more recently. And this is based on the conviction that digital transformation and partnerships for digital transformation to meet the sustainable development goals should have have what we call a Rome approach, which is that it should be rights-based, it should be open, it should be accessible, and it should be multi-stakeholder. And I'd like again to reiterate uh, our, our pleasure and commitment in working with the UN family, but also with different stakeholder groups to make this vision of digital transformation a reality. I invite also people here today to look at our Internet Universality Indicators Framework, which is a tool to ensure that digital technologies uh, are harnessed to uh, meet uh, the sustainable development goals. I'd also in this framework like to recognize the great work being done uh, by the ITU for which UNESCO is a partner in the framework of their equals partnership which ensures that women are around the table and centralized both in public policies and programs uh, that promote the uptake of ICTs. 
As it concerns Action Line C7 concerning e-learning, I'd like to very briefly underline that during our general conference, just in the past couple of days, uh, specifically on the 25th of November, UNESCO's member states officially adopted a recommendation as it concerns open educational resources. And in order for us uh, to make the most of digital technology, we need not only infrastructure, but we also need access to this information. And open access and open educational resources are at the heart of our work. In this framework, as it concerns e-science, also in the, the most recent general conference, we adopted a recommendation related to open science because we need access to education, but we need also access to scientific research that ensures that our public policies are developed based on needs and data uh, on the ground at the local level. Our uh, action line concerning cultural diversity and identity, linguistic diversity and local content, action line C8, I'd like to highlight that this year, uh, and still again for another month and a couple days, is the International Year of Indigenous Languages. And one of the things that UNESCO is looking at specifically in light of the age of artificial intelligence is the impact of technologies like AI on the preservation of local and indigenous languages and the promotion also in this regard of local content online. Our commitment is to make sure that in the Global South they are not positioned as only consumers but also producers using digital solutions uh, to local challenges to meet the sustainable development goals. Obviously in line with Action Line uh, C9 related to media, we continue our work on the safety of journalists with the conviction that rights that exist offline also exist online. And most recently we launched a coalition specifically looking at the question of harassment of women journalists online and how to use digital technologies to address the challenges that also come about by their propagation. Lastly, I'd like to close specifically in highlighting a, a momentous uh, decision in the framework of our general conference as it concerns Action Line C10, which is the ethical dimension, men, dimensions of the information society. Uh, most recently, last Thursday, our member states decided to begin a standard pro setting process to uh, develop a non-legally binding standard setting instrument in the field of the ethical dimensions of artificial intelligence, specifically related to our mandate. And we look forward to working with other agencies like the OECD, the Council of Europe, the European Commission, and our dear friends at the IEEE uh, to push forward some of the great work that's being done in developing these frameworks into truly international and global standards in this field that will not only ensure public policies on ethical AI, involving of course the private sector as well from the beginning, but also programs on the ground that ensure that ethical AI is used to meet sustainable development. I'd like to close by inviting you also, and I'd like to recognize two of my great colleagues who are around the table, Alexandre Barbo Barboza and Fabio, uh, to our upcoming regional uh, forum on artificial intelligence in Latin America and the Caribbean that will occur on December 12th and 13th at the University of Sao Paulo uh, with many partners, notably CETIC, uh, which is a category two center of UNESCO, because our commitment is not only to, uh, at the high level, ensure conversations, but at the regional and national and local levels ensure that they are uh, participating very actively in the development of public policies and programs so that digital technologies can be harnessed to meet sustainable development. In closing, I'd like to again thank uh, both ITU, UNCTAD and UNDP for the great cooperation and uh, reiterate our commitment to taking forward the WISIS SDG operational framework so that everybody is empowered to meet the sustainable development goals by harnessing all of the promises that, are sustain that is uh, digital technology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sasha, for your uh, commitment and dedication for working with us hand in hand. Uh, like you said, not only at the international level, but also at the regional level with the UN Regional Commissions for our VISIS regional reviews. Uh, thank you very much. We have our colleague, uh, Scarlett, who couldn't join us today physically uh, from UN, uh, fr sorry, from UNCTAD. So she will be making an intervention remotely. Uh, is she online? Is she ready? Please, was yours.
Excuse me, there's no sound coming from the stream yet. Uh, technician will arrive. Yeah. Um, while uh, this is being fixed... Now I have sound. Okay. Okay, I will switch to the stream as soon as it's decided to switch to the stream. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd now like to invite uh, Minerva, a <laughs> focal point from UNDP, uh, who's been uh, a great partner uh, in the WISIS process and the WISIS forum. They were also co-chairs of the United Nations Group on Information Society this year, along with the ITU. Uh, Minerva, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Gitanjali. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, it's been a pleasure indeed, as Gitanjali has said, to be working closely with uh, ITU, UNESCO, UNCTAD, and all the other agencies in Angus, and all the stakeholders in WISIS. The past year had been very instructive to us as UNDP, as, as you know, it was the first time that we took on chairmanship yeah. of Angus. I'll go on. And we, we saw just uh, the potential of uh, this body of experts for assisting the achievement of the SDGs. As, as you know, we have supported the development of SDG roadmaps of at least about 60 countries now and increasing. And everywhere we go, in, in every SDG roadmap, the role of technology is going to be underlined enough. So there has been okay, uh, also, a need that has, there has been a need that has been underlined in, in every process for the development of a digital transformation roadmap. It is increasingly clear that countries look to digital transformation as their way towards uh, building their competitiveness. So uh, the, this process here in, in WISIS and Angus as we ever we go, we always refer to this as the ready pool of experts. It will be greatly needed in the next 10 years. As you know, we refer to the next decade as the acceleration decade. 10 years for achieving the SDGs is not a long time. It's going to fly past. So there is indeed a, a call for, for action in this sphere. And we stand ready to, to work more closely with you. There is also one trend that we're seeing from where we sit as the uh, countries and as the world has become more digital, it has also become more urban. And as countries build also the cities uh, in their territories and making sure that they connect with all the other cities around the world in making the cities competitive and making sure that the cities in fact also assist their national trajectories there is a push for building smart cities. And we also obviously understand smart cities in various ways. And in UNDP, we also obviously refer to the need for smart governance, for building the cities of the future. Building the world we want and the cities we want. There is greater need for engaging local stakeholders. And obviously, uh, with Business and Angus being a multi-stakeholder platform, I think this is a model that has been greatly uh, understood and has been welcomed uh, warmly all over the world. And there's much that can be, can be learned here and leveraged also for engaging stakeholders from the local to the regional to the global. The multi-level, the horizontal, vertical cooperation that we need to have in place to achieve a 20 year third agenda. So I won't take much time and I'm sure our colleague uh, Scarlett is on hold to, to take the floor. I would just like to uh, reiterate our readiness to work more closely with you and obviously to enhance our, our cooperation in support of uh, the countries and the cities all over the world. And with that, we would like to hear more from the participants in the room.
and we look forward to an engaging discussion. It's just one hour, but in the lead up to WISIS in Geneva, and we also look forward to, to, dis to continuing the discussions there and hopefully not just discussing, but really planning and acting together. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minerva. We look forward to working with UNDP and strengthening our collaboration with you every year. Um, we now have a short presentation updating you on the preparations of the WISIS Forum 2020. We will bring in UN UNCTAD whenever they are ready and their mic is fixed. In the meanwhile, we will start with our preparation and then we will open the floor for all your comments, which we will take into the preparations of the WISIS Forum 2020. Could we please have our presentation online, please? Hello. Yeah. So as uh, Yushi and S uh, Sasha had mentioned, uh, you know, our uh, WISIS forum is basically a multi-stakeholder platform. It's co-organized by ITU, UNESCO, UNCTAD, and UNDP in collaboration with the UN agencies you see at the bottom. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, presence of uh, Denise from UN DESA out here, uh, who works with us very closely as well. Uh, Dennis, welcome. And uh, the dates, if you notice, they changed uh, from the previous week to 6th to 9th of April. So please note on your calendars that uh, we don't have Friday this year because Friday is Good Friday and we'd like to respect it as a holiday and uh, we finish our work on Thursday. So please note this on your calendars and please book your flights and accommodation as soon as possible because uh, Geneva tends to get really crowded and they don't have too much accommodation there. So uh, we look forward to seeing all of you at the WISIS Forum. Um, as, uh, so how does this move? Okay. So um, I, I think uh, my colleagues also mentioned that uh, since it's 15 years since the implementation of WISIS, uh, we will be, um, you know, looking at the different WISIS action lines um, to track the achievements. So that we do every year. Every year the WISIS action line facilitators come and talk about the achievements for the year and also the future plans. So we will look forward uh, to the WISIS action line facilitators briefing us about the implementation of their respective action lines. Um, we ha have several phases of the open consultation process, and since uh, the past five years, we have been integrating with the IGF Secretariat to hold one of the physical meetings at the IGF. And um, we will have another physical meeting on the 3rd of February in Geneva. Uh, this will be uh, along with the Council <coughs> Working Group on WISIS and SDGs in the ITU. Um, so you are most welcome to be there, uh, those of you who are in Geneva. Or we always have remote participation, so you can please join us uh, remotely as well. The deadlines for submissions of all the calls for action is 3rd of February, so please do keep that in mind. And 28th of February, we will have the final briefing, uh, this too in Geneva. So this is mostly to brief you about all the practical aspects like uh, registration, um, how to get uh, your ministers, uh, you know, speaking slots and things like that. So please do follow the open consultation process closely. As you are aware, the agenda of WISIS Forum is crowdsourced, so the co-organizers are mere facilitators. We get inputs from all of you, and uh, usually we get more than 550 inputs. And uh, since we are an inclusive, multi-stakeholder platform, we include all the inputs. That's not a single input that is not included in the agenda of the WISIS Forum. Um, so please note, the high-level track will take place on Tuesday and Wednesday on the 7th and 8th of April. So you, uh, the, the letters will be issued very soon. Please um, register your high-level uh, person or delegate at the website, identifying the particular topic the person would like to speak on. Uh, we were asked in 2014 to stop policy statements and to make the high-level sessions more interactive. So we have a high-level track facilitator for all the sessions. 
and all the high-level track uh, sessions are facilitated, they are moderated, so that they are interesting and they are not just uh, policy statements. Uh, so our key indicators uh, that we are uh, looking forward to are 3,000 plus physical participants at the WISIS Forum, 150 plus countries represented, 100 plus ministers and deputies, and we want the WISIS Forum to uh, display the cross-sectoral na nature of the WISIS Action Lines and SDGs. So my colleagues um, from UNESCO, UNDP, UNCTAD, UNDESA, since many years we've been brainstorming how we can bring ministers other than the ICT ministers as well to participate at the WISIS Forum. So we are hoping that we will get at least um, uh, you know, 20 ministers from the other um, uh, ministries uh, so that we can display the cross-sectoral nature of ICTs. Um, uh, nearly five th 500 plus high-level representatives, 250 plus workshops, 18 prize winners for each of the WISIS action lines, and 70 WISIS champions. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of some prize winners in this room from China, Ms. Liu, uh, from Bangladesh, uh, Balzur, and I'm sure there are many more. Poland, of course, uh, IEEE, I think you won a prize yes. some year. So uh, there are a lot of uh, prize winners in this room as well. Thank you for being here. Um, we'll have a very modest exhibition space because we are extra budgetary, so we do not have mon much money to spend on our exhibition. Uh, but of course, it is about uh, what you're doing, and we really value the work that is going on all over the world. So please do request for your exhibition space through the open consultation process form, and we will definitely give you a stand. Uh, it's free of cost, so please uh, do not hesitate to write to us. Um, of course, balanced multi-stakeholder participation. We are very proud of this. I'll share some charts later on. Uh, we have uh, nearly equal distribution of stakeholders at the WISIS Forum. Um, our 50-50 challenge, uh, Sasha and others spoke about this. Uh, we had 60-40 um, uh, this year, but we'd like to have 50-50 uh, male and female participants at the WISIS Forum. So please make an extra effort, colleagues, to make sure that your delegations are gender balanced. Our Secretary General, Mr. Haolin Zhao, is a gender, um, Geneva gender champion, and each, in each letter that he sends out, he does emphasize on the fact that the delegations should be gender balanced. So uh, we look forward to equal participation. So as you know, the WISIS Forum has a forum track which comprises of country workshops which are owned by the, uh, basically the government talks about what they've been doing in the area of uh, WISIS action lines and SDGs. We have thematic workshops which are based on themes. Action line facilitation workshops, these are organized by the UN action line facilitators. Special tracks, I'll talk about them later. We have WISIS talks. Uh, these are some uh, talks we inaugurated this year based on the lines of TED Talks. And uh, if you know of real people who have had a huge influence in their respective communities, their villages, their country, or internationally, we'd really like to have them speak at the WISIS talks. Uh, please let us know. Please nominate them so that we can uh, share their story with everybody at the WISIS Forum. The hackathon this next year will be on smart cities. We are collaborating with University of Geneva, and uh, we are talking to, um, uh, to uh, several other UN agencies who will be interested in working with us. Um, exhibition, I spoke about it. We have several knowledge cafes, we'll have youth cafes, and of course we will have our traditional United Nations uh, group on information society meeting. So some of the special tracks which uh, stakeholders have already asked us to start working on uh, is ICT and youth. So we had it in 2019 as well. Um, next year, we plan to collaborate with several youth associations uh, to have an actual agenda for the implementation of WISIS action lines and SDGs uh, and engage with the youth in global UN processes. Uh, we plan to have a youth lounge, which would be for young people, uh, and um, it would be an informal way of interacting uh, with everybody, so feel free to go to the youth lounge and speak to the young people who will be present at the WISIS Forum. 
Um, we were asked to start exploring uh, ICTs and older persons, the topic. And as we explored it, we realized that it's a very, very important topic, uh, which has various streams, um, uh, like employment, uh, healthcare, and there are various issues, digital finance. Um, so you will see a lot of sessions. We are partnering with the Global uh, Coalition on Aging, and several UN agencies who are already working uh, on this topic especially um, UN SCAP at the regional level. They are working on this topic and they will be collaborating with us on this track. Um, ICTs and accessibility for persons with disabilities and special needs. Uh, we had this track this year as well and we were asked to continue it. Um, so if you know of any organizations working in this area, please do put them in touch with us so that we can make sure that they get a voice uh, in, in this track. Um, we initiated the ICT and sport um, as enabler of uh, peace uh, track this year. And it was really appreciated. We were asked by um, several stakeholders to also bring the gaming component and the ethics of gaming into the ICT and sports. So not only physical sports, but the gaming aspect of it also. So if you all know any such associations or companies, please let us know because this is a new topic for the VISIS Forum. But we are already <coughs> in touch with several um, associations, including the China, Europe, Association of Gaming, so um, it will be very interesting because there are a lot of virtual reality um, games and the ethics of gaming, I'm sure UNESCO will be very interested in that topic as well, so it's going to be interesting. The International Olympics Committee, uh, they joined, uh, 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 they worked with us this year and we are in trying to uh, get some collaboration with them for 2020 as well. I spoke about gender mainstreaming, which is really important for all of us. Um, space and SDGs, uh, we'll be exploring this topic as well. Uh, there was some stakeholders who said space diplomacy is uh, very uh, getting very important. Uh, space and SDGs should be explored further. So we will be uh, looking at this topic as well. Extended reality for development. There will be many, many uh, showcases of how virtual reality and extended reality is used in the field of education, health, and to achieve various other SDGs. Um, so new tools and services, um, um, you know, we had sign language uh, interpretation for the uh, accessibility tracks. Uh, however, sign language, uh, for physical sign language interpreters to be present, it's uh, really expensive. So we do look forward to receiving some funding for this uh, specific activity. Um, our VISIS Forum website is now in six UN official languages. Uh, thank you, uh, colleagues, for encouraging us to do that. Uh, this is being done in-house uh, in collaboration with the standardization sector at the ITU. Uh, machine captioning, we did a test uh, this year, um, uh, so we do hope eventually we could have machine captioning at the VISIS Forum, uh, but right now uh, it, it, we don't. Um, we do caption our accessibility sessions, but we, are, uh, we don't have machine captioning at present. So this is for all of you to know that there is a great repository of photos from all over the world on the VISIS Forum websites. Every year we receive photographs, I think more than uh, 150 photographs, and it's free for all of you to use for your publications, for your presentations. There are lovely photographs from all over the world. So please, I'd like to encourage you to use these photographs. And um, the deadline for this year's competition is 3rd of February. So um, uh, please submit any good photographs from the ground that you have. We created this repository because um, even UN agencies, whenever we had a publication, we could never find any good uh, high, call, high resolution photographs. So um, this is a great repository, please use it. Um, next slide. So um, I'll pass on to my colleague uh, Vladimir to talk about the prizes. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for, you, for those of you who don't know me yet, uh, I've been present here also at the VISIS exhibition booth just outside of this room, and I invite you to um, 
join us in discussions later after this session. So the VSIS prizes is ongoing. Uh, it's the most urgent deadline, if you have not noticed it so far. This week, uh, by Friday, is the deadline for you to submit any of the ICT projects that you have or you believe should be promoted globally. Uh, I invite you to visit the website dedicated for the prizes. It's uh, at visis.org slash prizes. Uh, or you can come and talk to me about it. So far, we are reaching the number of the last year's record, 1,000 submissions. The innovation this year will be that we will not nominate more than 360 projects in order to facilitate online voting in the best manner so those uh, online participants can digest and read through the three, 360 projects instead of 1,000, as it was the case this year. Uh, in addition to that, uh, those who will be nominated should also be um, perceived as uh, awardees. So not only the champions and winners, but this time nominees will also be appreciated. Uh, following this phase, uh, on Friday, we will go into the nomination phase. And on 21st of December, we will be launching our online voting phase. Uh, it will end on 24th of January. I invite all of you uh, to who are running for the prizes this year or not uh, to uh, create um, your online campaigns in this regard. Uh, we are also preparing innovations during the VSIS Forum to strengthen the promotion of uh, this year, next year's VSIS champions, nominees, and winners. But we are also looking into working together with the former VSIS Prize awardees that have this year launched and established a VSIS Prize network. Uh, we see them uh, as promoters of the VSIS Prize and overall VSIS process and ICT for SDGs. And we would like to uh, uh, invite all of you who have not joined this network um, to, to consider joining it. Thank you. Um, so I think Vladimir already spoke about this. We have a global repository of uh, stock-taking database, more than 12,000 entries. Uh, we have a call for action every year. Uh, we also do these regional reports, so please do submit to them. Um, the stock-taking platform, uh, Vladimir has been working on making it as accessible as possible. So it looks as simple as this. Uh, it, it helps you to search and explore. So please do use it to find the projects uh, and learn more information. It's based on VSIS action lines and SDGs for you to uh, you know, look for projects very easily. Um, uh, Vladi, I think this is important. You should share uh, you know, the beneficiaries. Sure, so we're also following uh, and trying to see who are the target groups this time. Uh, also in the online submission form for the prizes, we are asking particular questions, helping uh, those who are submitting to better reflect how are their projects making social impact, uh, but not only social, also economic and environmental. This will be the basis for our expert group to select uh, those who will be considered as winners and champions. Uh, in addition to this, um, you can find uh, all this data on the VSIS stock taking website. As Gitanjali mentioned, we are going into our third phase of up the update of this uh, very important online repository, where we are also looking into strengthening the reporting uh, uh, part and the context of this, uh, context of this uh, uh, VSIS stock taking platform. Uh, this should be launched by uh, the next year's forum. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. Um, also, we've been trying to, uh, you know, we receive a lot of calls and good emails sharing with us the impact of the VSIS Forum, <coughs> but somehow we've never got around or had the time to record this impact. Uh, however, for, from last year, we just put together some of the um, uh, good news that was shared with us. Uh, you know, the VSIS uh, gender group, they have several sessions at the VSIS Forum, and they were recently invited by the Minister of uh, Benin, who was in their session, to do a training um, in Benin uh, for women um, on Amazons of the digital. This was the topic. But they had a very successful meeting. The first photo is uh, uh, about the meeting. Um, then the World XR Forum, which is a partner of the VSIS Forum for all extended reality uh, activities, was invited by the Minister of Rwanda to actually uh, work in the area of, um, actually explore, actually, um, explore the area of uh, extended reality and education. 
So uh, this was a, a good outcome, and they are a startup. So we really encourage startups at the WISIS Forum also, where, we, where they get a direct opportunity to pitch their uh, their, com their startup and their uh, you know the sentiment behind their startup. Um, very re recently, um, Mr. Malcolm Johnson, the Deputy Secretary General of ITU, uh, and I had visited a village in Bangkok uh, where, uh, you know, their profits have increased by 300% by getting rural connectivity. And they are also a WISIS Prize winner, and they shared with us that after win winning the WISIS Prize, they've been able to get more credibility and their profit, it has had an impact on the uh, economic uh, development of the village. Um, we also attended the WISIS uh, Regional Review. We organized it in collaboration with UNESCO, UNDP, and uh, UN uh, SCAP at the regional level. It was great to see that many collaborations that were shared out there, they were forged at the WISIS Forum, because that's the whole purpose of global events like WISIS Forum, that uh, you know partnerships are made and they are carried on at the regional and the local level. Um, a woman empowerment NGO in Pakistan had received funding um, uh, from the German Development Institute, actually, uh, after their session at the WISIS Forum. And this is the whole idea that you come, you present, and people are impressed by what you're doing, and you forge partnerships. Um, then uh, there were, there's this startup called We Robotics. They were also invited by uh, the Minister of Benin uh, to explore how drones can be used for social good. So these are just some uh, experiences we are sharing, uh, you know, but there are many more and we'll try to capture all the impact from now on because it's really great to share these uh, stories where you can see the real impact. Um, just a reminder of all the open calls, the WISIS prizes deadline is uh, 29th, 29th of uh, November. Uh, please respect the deadline because it's a very tight, uh, uh, you know, uh, timing for us and all the, the expert groups, so please respect this deadline. The open consultation process is 3rd of February, so if you'd like to request for exhibition space, for workshops, uh, recommend speakers, uh, visit talks, everything is in the open consultation process form. And like I said, every request is included. So please uh, do fill it up before the 3rd of February. Photo contest, <coughs> the deadline is 3rd of February. Um, High-level track facilitators, um, like I said, we have 16 high-level sessions where ministers, CEOs, and others speak. Uh, and heads of civil society organizations. Um, we are, we basically get nominations for, from the civil society, academia, um, uh, from the technical community, and the private sector. So governments are not high level track facilitators and UN agencies are not high level track facilitators. So please, if you do have some great nominations, uh, do send them to us. Uh, I mentioned the WISIS Forum is completely extra budgetary. We do not have any funds for organizing the WISIS Forum. Uh, and due to the commitment of partners like Poland, IEEE, Switzerland, and I see many of you around, I can, we are able to uh, basically defray the operational costs of the WISIS Forum. And Switzerland, Geneva is very expensive. So even small services, they cost a lot. Even chairs and tables, they cost a lot. <laughs> yeah, renting chairs and tables. So um, we basically um, uh, really are very grateful to all our sponsors who are helping us to make this uh, event possible. Um, we have social media channels. Please follow us there. Uh, we, have, we are very popular on Twitter, Facebook. And we realized that the young people don't use these Facebook and Twitter anymore. They've moved on to Instagram and TikTok and other stuff. So we opened an Instagram. Uh, our our uh, interns said that we are too old in our <laughs> outlook. So we've started the Instagram page as well. Uh, please post some good pictures there. And we have a Visis Flash. It's a monthly newsletter which contains only updates. So please subscribe to the WISIS Flash so that you are um, updated of all the happenings around the WISIS process. So thank you very much. If you have any uh, uh, questions, you can write there at wisis-info at the rate of itu.int. But we'd now like to open the floor. Um, we do have our partners who would like to speak. Uh, maybe we'll start with uh, IEEE, Justin. 
Thank you, Gitanjali. It's, um, it's great to be here in person, finally, again. <laughs> um, uh, I represent IEEE. Uh, we're the world's largest uh, professional society for electrical and electronics engineers. And uh, this is, I think, our fifth year as a partner. And we've loved the collaboration we've had throughout the process. And um, uh, one of the things we did strive to do, <coughs> excuse me, is to achieve gender balance um, with all of our panels. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, Nigel, you want to take over? I lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> what, speaking for the IEEE? <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll come back. It was after last night. <coughs> That's great collaboration. Uh, Nigel, uh, from ICANN, we were just opening the floor, so oh, you're most right. welcome today. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I do apologize for, uh, for coming in so late. Um, for, for, for ICANN, I think most of you probably know what ICANN is. We're a, uh, an organization that has a responsibility in relation to the domain name system. As such, we, uh, we touch on a small part, if you like, of the internet uh, ecosystem. We're not, we don't run the internet, we're not responsible for content, we're not responsible for uh, controls on the internet, but we do have a, a relationship to the domain name system, we have contracts in place with uh, holders of generic top-level domains. As, as such, we have a, we have a mission uh, that relates to the uh, security and the stability and the singularity and the openness of the, of the internet, and as such, we engage in, in, in the internet ecosystem. And, and, and the WISIS Forum for us is a, is a, is a, is a, is a venue where we can, we can meet people, we can contribute with other uh, partners in the technical community in presenting issues that are, might be of interest to, uh, to, the general, uh, to the general internet community in general. And we, we do find it uh, uh, very useful indeed. We've been partners with the ITU at the, uh, at the WISIS Forum, or been partners with the WISIS Forum for a number of years now, and have had the ability to uh, present at, uh, present workshops and present ideas, uh, and also feedback to the to the community what's going on uh, at the ICANN space. So, uh, very very pleased to be involved, and look forward to uh, look forward to next year, uh, indeed. Thank you very much, Nigel. Uh, I, I think I'm better now. So. Can take over. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to just mention is uh, nominate people to be a high-level track facilitator. Uh, I had the experience of doing it, and I loved it. So um, uh, please do that and submit prizes, because we saw the benefit of a winner of ours. So <clears throat> I'm going to stop there now. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Justin. Uh, Lydia from Poland. The Office of Electronic Communications I have a pleasure to represent here as a part of uh, public administration of Poland. Uh, and uh, uh, we are traditionally a contributing partner uh, to WISIS Forum. Next year, uh, as in previous years, we also have a plan to, to contribute to, to the WISIS Forum uh, because it's the event of great importance for us and we really value multi-stakeholder part participation and multi-stakeholder stakeholder uh, approach. Uh, therefore, every year we uh, try to invite uh, our experts from Poland representing academia and private sector. Uh, last year we facilitated a workshop on emerging technologies, uh, discussing emerging technologies in different uh, aspects. Um, we also had a chance to present our experience on area of strategic planning of uh, broadband deployment and uh, our experience of uh, mapping digital infrastructure, which is our core uh, competence uh, at uh, UKE, our office. And I would like to invite all of you uh, to collaborate with us. We are ready to share with all stakeholders our experience, our best practice. Uh, we will be there and uh, it will be a pleasure to, uh, to, to discuss with you. Uh, um, moreover, every year we organize at our uh, permanent mission uh, of the Republic of Poland in Geneva, a high-level meeting where we present our uh, SMEs. Uh, this year we will technically in uh, 2020. Uh, we also have such a plan. Uh, so. Uh, 
it will be a fantastic opportunity to discuss innovations appearing in, in academia and in the private sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lydia, uh, and Poland for hosting the uh, donors' dinner every year as well. Uh, those of you who have attended the donors' dinner, the barbecue is very famous. <laughs> we absolutely love it. Thank you very much for it your generosity. It will be a pleasure to see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Contribution. Uh, our prize winner from Bangladesh is here, and he'd like to say a few words. Yeah, very good afternoon to all of you. I am A.H.M. Bozlur Rahman, Chief Executive Officer Bangladesh and Jews Network for Radio and Communication and member of the Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. I have the privilege to engage with WSIS process from 2002. Uh, we are the winner of WSIS Award 2016, uh, Sempion 2017, and also Sempion 2019. So finally, we uh, five project awarded by the WSIS. It's a huge recognition from the WSIS side. Thank you very much for WSIS Forum. Uh, very honored to participate here to ITU WSIS Forum face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, our Honorable MP, His Excellency Hassan Alok Inu, MP, Honorable Chairman, Parliamentary Standing Committee for Ministry of Information and Chair of the Bangladesh IGF. And uh, my side, Mr. M. H. Konu, Secretary General, Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. Uh, we have some country level commitment. So, uh, you know, Bangladesh is the currently chair of the WSIS Forum, and this chairship will finish up to uh, 2020 uh, meeting when WSIS will begin. So, we have some country level commitment. We would like to organize a country level forum called WSIS Forum Bangladesh. And we would like to review uh, the C1 to C11 uh, WSIS action line in our country context in collaboration with the multi-stakeholder uh, uh, format. And uh, we would like to organize our all winner and also champion, those who are received award from the WSIS side. I have some uh, observation uh, regarding the uh, coming uh, forum. Uh, I would like to fully endorse the Secretary General High Level Panel on Digital Cooperation Report. And I would be very happy if you organize something regarding the report because uh, where we are, where is our stake in the Honorable Secretary General uh, report. So you would like to provide our full uh, endorsement, full value to this report, and we would like to uh, connect with this report from Bangladesh to Secretary General report and Secretary General report to Bangladesh. So it is our one of the recommendations. Another recommendation is I would be very happy if, if WSIS forum, uh, forum, uh, forum uh, continue to discussion about fourth industrial revolution because Bangladesh is one of the country uh, impacted country for the fourth industrial revolution uh, side and especially shaping the future of media, entertainment, and culture. I would like to draw the attention to the UNESCO uh, regarding this. So can we organize some session regarding shaping the future of media, entertainment, and culture? Because UNESCO is our guardian in this area. So uh, we would be very happy if we organize something regarding this. And finally, please include some member of the parliament from different region, ICT for parliamentarian. So my one of the parliamentarian, honorable parliamentarian is here. So we would be very happy if you consider uh, to uh, some, uh, gather some parliamentarian from different region. Thank you, this is my contribution. Uh, thank you, Balzur, and thank you, sir, for coming to our session. Uh, we are very honored by your presence, and we look forward to welcoming you at the Visis Forum as well. Um, Bangladesh, uh, for their, one of the prizes that they won, they had more than one million votes. It's amazing, one million votes. <laughs> so congratulations, that was really uh, excellent. Sure, sir. Well, thank you very much uh, uh, for welcoming me. I had been, uh, and Bangladesh is part of the YSS, WSIS for many years. As I remember, I was uh, a participant in Geneva uh, on the issue of financial uh, mechanism to, for ICTs organized by WSIS. Uh, but uh, my colleagues do participate in the WSIS process regularly. And uh, Bangladesh as a, de as a developing country is a role model 
for the application of ICTs in various sectors. I don't want to go into details, but uh, we appreciate the organization WSIS, IGF, and Bangladesh is a continuously advocating open, multi-stakeholder, democratic governance of internet. But the challenge of the time is poverty and terrorism. So that is the issues which I, we think that internet is the best tool to reduce poverty and internet is the best tool to check terrorism and uh, threat on the cyberspace. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, we had the inter, in collaboration with the IPU, the Inter-Parliamentary uh, Union, and UN DESA, we had organized uh, a Parliamentary Union conference, and I think you were present out there, yes. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'd also like to uh, acknowledge the presence of our colleague from UNECA. Uh, hi, Maktar. Uh, uh, UNECA, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Uh, they organize the WISIS regional uh, level meetings and uh, Maktar is at the forefront of many of them. Uh, would you like to say something, Maktar? Uh, good afternoon to everybody. And thank you, Gitangeli. Yes, uh, we are partner for this WCS uh, forum since a long time, since, since the beginning. And uh, United Nations as one of the institution of UN Secretariat as in charge to support African country to implement the WCS forum. We'll align this implementation with the Agenda SDG to 2030 as well as the African Union Agenda 2063. And we'll organize every year this African Visits Forum to review the implementation of the outcome of this at the African country level, to look at the challenge and the perspective. This year, uh, next week, we'll organize this forum in Yaoundé from, uh, uh, from 3 to 6 December in Yaoundé, we are going to organize this Africa Regional Forum for Africa. This Africa Regional Forum was, it will give opportunity for African country to make their preparation for the, WCS, the Global Visits Forum. And uh, the output, um, the outcome of this uh, meeting will be feed in the WCS, Global Visits Forum. In parallel also, in uh, our mission to support African country for digitalization, UNECA also has already put a center of excellence of digital ID, digital economy, and digital economy to fully support African country to benefit from the four industrial revolution. We have a lot of activity around this digital center for some pilot project on digital ID, the issue of interoperability, uh, capacity building for African country and private sector, harmonization also uh, of uh, several policy around Africa to align with the world orientation. We have so also a challenge, big challenge now for Africa. Uh, we are uh, developing a digital transformation strategy for Africa. We already done uh, the first draft and uh, the first draft have been adopted by the Minister of ICT. We are going to submit this draft to the joint STC for the other minister, and probably we think we'll submit the draft for the each of state summit in the end of January to be adopted. And it will be the framework for African development dig digital economy. Is uh, something I want to else, and I thank you, ITU, as a colleague, UNESCO, UNDP, for their collaboration during many, many years, and will continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Maktar. Uh, we also would like to acknowledge the presence of Rwanda out here. They are very close partners of the WISIS Forum, uh, and they, they are also sponsors of the WISIS Forum every year. Thank you, Rwanda, for being here. Our uh, co-organizer, Ungtad, is now ready to make an intervention. So, Scarlett, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you very much. Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Could you please let me know that you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Scarlett. Very much. So, first of all, I would like to apologize for not being able to connect earlier. Thank God that uh, you are paying more attention to youth in the WISIS forum because we are getting old and <laughs> I don't know how to connect properly now on, uh, on, on these things, on these applications. But that said, let me say that ONCTAD, as always, is honored to be sharing the organization of the WISIS forum with uh, UNDP, UNESCO and ITU and that um, we are looking forward to the discussions which are always very rich and informative during the forum itself. That said, we are here because this is an open consultation meeting and open consultation means just that. We are eager to hear from stakeholders on your inputs on the, not only on the um, uh, subject that we're going, the subjects that we're going to be uh, discussing on the sessions that you would like to see at the WISIS Forum, but also on the structure, the manner, feedback on how uh, you think we can best uh, include everyone's voices in uh, the discussions of building a better information society. I'd like to note that um, we are, for UNCTAD, it's also a milestone year. It's a milestone year for the WISIS Forum, which is 15 years, but it's a milestone year for us because we have our 15th uh, ministerial conference later in the year. So we want to take the opportunity of the WISIS Forum to also bring um, with us the concerns, especially of developing countries, which is our main constituency, with regards to the digital economy and e-commerce. Um, as you might also know, we're not only co-organizers of the WISIS Forum, but we are also co-facilitators of the Action Line C7 on e-business with uh, the International Trade Center, ITC, and with the Universal Postal Union, UPU. And uh, in, this, in, in this time since uh, those 15 years, one of the things that has changed has been the focus from e-business to a more comprehensive view of the digital economy and a very uh, keen and renewed interest in uh, leveraging e-commerce for development. So we would like to encourage you to uh, give us your feedback, your input to participate as stakeholders uh, in the discussions related to digital economy and uh, e-commerce in the um, WISIS forum. Um, and also ONCTAD is hoping to bring uh, a high level discussion to the WISIS forum precisely on, on this topic. Um, that said, uh, we are hoping to see you in person. I won't be connecting remotely. I will be at the WISIS forum in Geneva and um, just encourage you to participate as actively to remember the deadlines because we have uh, limits of time and capacity, so it's important to, to intervene and to give your inputs at the right time in a timely manner to uh, make sure that you are counted. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me, even if it's at the very end, and have a good day in Berlin. Thank you, Gitanjali. Thank you very much, Scarlett. Thank you. Uh, since we've run out of time, uh, this gentleman, I think you had raised your hand, sir. Could you please, uh, uh, you know, uh, introduce yourself? And I think that will be the last one from yeah. the floor. Horst Kremers, Codeta Germany. Just a short question. Um, uh, where would I find, if I talk to people from media, uh, where would I find the slot where people from media, that is newspaper, TV stations, is not only the traditional one, but the alternative ones and so on, which are not just in the exhibition, but, but they are central to, to information societies. This is our main moderators and opinion makers. Uh, so where is the media domain being active in WISIS? Uh, uh, 
Yeah. Yes, uh, so we have a briefing for the media in the UN in Geneva, and we have a press conference during the VISIS forum. However, if you send us your submission through the open consultation process form, we will make sure we connect you to whichever media sessions that are going to take place at the VISIS forum. So please fill in the OCP and we will uh, connect you. Uh, I think, uh, Ms. Liu, you had one last word, a final word? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I think this uh, uh, is excellent opportunity for us to work together. So last, uh, last year we got the, uh, uh, the VC surprise for e-science champion and the China pay more attention about this. So they are so proud and uh, give us uh, full support. So I think the next year we, uh, we will organize a good team to participate in the VCs. And then uh, we will uh, uh, work together with other uh, teams. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, and congratulations for winning the prize. Uh, Sasha also brought to my attention, uh, sir, that there is an action line on uh, media which UNESCO facilitates. So if you do have any further questions, you can even speak to Sasha about the action line on media. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to now hand over the floor to Yushi uh, Torigore, uh, our chief, to please close the meeting. Uh, thank you very much for your very active uh, contribution. Uh, our secretariat uh, take note of our contribution. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 2020 is, uh, in fact, the uh, UN 75 year, and uh, we will certainly consider uh, some session on, on this subject. Uh, now, emerging technologies like AI, big data, 5G, IoT, blockchain, cloud computing, and even a quantum computing are on the table for discussion. And uh, discussion of this is far beyond our, our information society. And I would like to highlight our strengths that is uh, fully inclusive. It's uh, government, private, academia, and the civil society. So I wish to highlight and uh, we wish to uh, collaborate and uh, let's work together for the success of WISIS 2020. Thank you very much. Ah... Oh.